Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of From the Depths. It is absolutely fantastic to have you here, as usual. So I do want to apologize for the delay we had in episodes. Uh, we had like some huge storms here in Texas. Totally knocked my nets out. Um, they were totally intermittent for like two days straight. I couldn't get any uploading done, so it's a total bummer. Anyways, we're back up and running now, which is great. Ah, the folly of the internet. You know when it goes out, you just you feel so naked? It's crazy. You just feel so weird. So anyways, let's take a look at where we lay here with the Grey Talons right now. What sort of sexiness we are getting ourselves into. So I went ahead and spawned in uh, a new community ship. And I have made this fleet. It's called the High Hippos. And this consists of the new ship I brought in called the Begamot. I believe is how you pronounce it. Uh, and I want to say, I don't know if there's anything behind this name. Uh, the author never mentioned it, but uh, I was looking online and it seems like this is... Uh, a Russian word, which is uh, just, you know, a meaning of hippo or hippopotamus or something. So I called the group the High Hippos. I thought, thought that could be pretty fitting. And uh, even if it's not super fitting, when you see the ship, uh, you'll go, mm, yeah, that feels right. It's it's hard to describe, but I have a feeling we're going to get wrecked here by the Grey Talons with these new ships. Um, in the vehicle designer, I did some tweaks to it. I added some more engines to give it a little bit more speed so it could climb. And I altered its uh, cruising altitude from like 50 meters to like, you know, 350. Uh, just to uh, get it up in the air some more. So, I don't, I don't know. We'll see how it does. So, I'm thinking we're just going to jump right down here and get this massively ridiculous battle underway. Here's what we're looking at, ladies and gents. We got a Force Count 5 Strength 120 Great Talons fleet here with the uh, flagship of a Hell Raven. And the other one over here is the Fifth Army. As a force count of two strength 40, probably one of those fleets that just came straight from the fortress. You know, nothing, nothing to worry about there. Not a big deal. All right, let's hop on down here. We're going to start with the Begamot this time. I don't want to show you guys a ship. Oh my God, look at all this. And then just kind of like, you know, tease you with it and then never show it to you. So I'm learning my lesson here. One thing I definitely need to do is make sure all my ships that are going to be flying are, like, already up in the air. You know? I'm not falling for that. Homie, don't play that, man. Getting all these up. Got the stormiest clouds. Got our super condors and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then our, our, our stolen striders down there. We still got the bull shark, you know? We really haven't seen that bad mother in play. Wait, do we? Bull shark? There it is. Okay. Whoo! I got a little worried there. All right, let's get over to our Begamots. I'm hoping we get the force point advantage here. I mean, look at all our ships. My God. All right, we're gonna we're gonna bring all three of these in. I'm I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt here. Here we go. I'm so worried, you guys. Seriously. Oh, we get 20 force points. Are you shitting me? Awesome. No, I'm inside it. Crap. Hang on. Is this a way out? Nope. Okay, hang on. One sec. Just get my dude out of there. Go! Yeah, there we go. I did not want him flying in uh, in the airplane cockpit, if I could talk. So let's see what's going to happen here. Probably going to be a very quick game over for our Begamot. So what I'm going to do is we're going to look for some... Tri Ooh, we do have the Kursks. You know, those could be pretty dang good. Hang on, where'd they go? Kursk? Where are you? No, 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 hang on. Where's the Kursk? That's what I'm looking for. Oh no, are these them? Well, I could like... I could almost bring one of them in. I haven't uh, altered the max range on the Kursk quite yet to get it working optimally uh, our begamots are are not dead you know in the vehicle designer they died so quick they died from one pass against a pelican which uh, is not the most amazing thing like yeah oh we're getting hammered all right look we got to bring in we got to bring in somebody else here so we're gonna bring in a couple of uh, beluga elite scrototypes to help save the day a squeech where? Oh, there they are. Okay. I was about to be really worried. Like, oh, yeah, we, we brought those in across the galaxy. Pretty sweet. All right, so now let's see how we're doing here. 
Let's go get a closer look at the Begamot real quick so we can at least, you know, scope out the ship and all of its glory and grandeur. Let's just hop right down here. No? Yes. So here it is. Very cool looking ship. I like the design with the spin blocks attached to the light blocks around the uh, cannons. Oh crap, I just placed a block. Oh, well, now it's it's in that weird mode if you're building in a battle where it's like, oh there it goes, okay, disappeared. Uh, it's got these huge cannons on here. I think this is the uh, the mainstay of the ship. This is like it's big beef and chunkaroni. You know, it's like rice-a-roni. It's such a San Francisco treat. Woo, you'll have to excuse me there. I had to clear my throat a little bit. So that's the Begamot. It's a very cool ship. It's got, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, it's what I like to call a lazy flyer. Doesn't it look like a lazy flyer? The way it turns, its angle deviation to turn is set to 180. Oh, don't you do it. Oh, are you shitting me? What is this always happen? Holy shit balls. Squeech a doodle ma diddly dips. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Begamot down. Hungry, hungry hippos. They just wrecked each other. A mid-air reckoning, if you will. Oh, Begamot, you're cracking me up. Let's go take a look at our health, shall we? Okay, one of them's at 27. We'll be despawning him. Cool. This wasn't a super huge waste of resources. I sort of knew that these were going to probably get wrecked to some degree. Although, honestly, you know, they weren't doing too bad. They did more than wrecking themselves. So do we have an enemy anywhere? All right, let's go check it out. Let's see what the enemy's doing. He's scoping out our sweet uh, hippo situation over here. We've got the Beluga Elites firing from really far. So I will say this, in place of the Begamot, I almost brought in a ship called the Blood Destitution. Uh, however, you should note, uh, I mean, f f I didn't bring the Blood Destitution in, obviously, because this ship, it was like really, really expensive. It cost more resources than I had. Um, I think I had like 850,000 metal. Excuse me, this thing was 950, or no, 980,000 metal, something like that. Really costly, and also, wow, we getting toe up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty sure we have less than 27% on one of these Begamots. I could be wrong. But anyways, yeah, I wasn't able to bring in the Blood Destitution, so every now and then, just FYI, like, I'll have to skip a ship in the queue, even if it looks like it'll be really useful. Uh, if it would be bringing our resources all the way down to zero. Oh, I'm sorry, it's uh, 790,000 metal. And uh, I had something like 680,000, I believe, when I started spawning stuff in. Okay, so we took out another enemy. Let's go take a look here. I think we may spawn something else in ourselves. Could be pretty cool. Uh, maybe bring a curse skin. Actually, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. And then I'm going to alter up one of his... Oh, actually... Hmm. These Kursks are in a bad place, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get them selected. Maybe we can do like a swivel and swivel this guy out into the water. And then I'll, I'll drop him from up high. I wish I could move him just a squeech, you know? Oh, you know what we could do that we haven't done yet? Oh, yeah, we... Okay, we're gonna try... Stop it, please. Let me drag my forces. Stolen striders. Oops, that's not what I wanted. I'm so retarded sometimes. You'll have to forgive me going full derp mode. Stop it. Let me click on the mother effing forces. There we go. There we go. Woo! Okay, yeah, I want to bring the bull shark... Oh, he is... Oh, we have 13 force points. Wait a sec. These begum... Oh, I brought the beluga elites. Durr. Well then, many apologies. Many apologies. So let's go take a look here. How are we doing? This is a hunchback. It is a hunchback. Thank goodness for the Beluga Elites because we are rocking and rolling. So, you know what? Let's go check our curse like I was going to do. Looks like he is swiveled in such a way that uh, we will definitely be able to get this guy into play here. Let's do it. Forces, show me the curse. He's looking like a beast. All right, which one's which? I want this one. Yeah. Oh, please, God, be the right one. Yay! Go, Kursk! 
Uh, maybe I won't mess with his firing her. Oh, he's got some heals going. Oh my. Oh my. Hang on. Let's look. Because this Begamot is wrecked. So how did our ships come out of that? Um, well, could be could be worse. Could be better, but it could be worse. You know, so we've still got two Begamots. Now what I'd like to do is see them actually shoot their freaking cannons. See, here's the problem. If you ever have a plane that turns like this, right? Oh boy, look at him shooting his little tweedles. Uh, it's, you know, where your angle deviation is set to 180 degrees, essentially meaning you can only turn along the horizontal plane, as you see here, without using, uh, you know, uh, left and right thrusters, I guess. Um, yeah, you're going to have these really wide, ridiculous turns. So it's, it's just really hard to ever see these guys, like, get a bead on a ship. All right, let's go see. I think the Hunchback actually took back off again, did it? Maybe? Or do we have a Hell Raven? Oh, we've got a Hell Raven. Oh, my. <clears throat> I do like this ship. I really do. You know, as much as I have gripes against the Grey Talons, and as much as I misspell the word Grey in Grey Talons, I always spell it G-R-E-Y instead of G-R-A-Y. Uh, I really like the ships. They're just really cool looking. And this guy's crapping smoke out like you wouldn't believe. All right, so it looks like the Kursk is now underway. Got his missiles going. Oh, it is a beaut. So I could remove the uh, the augmented proportional guidance snoog. And in fact, oh my god, loud. Oh my god, loud. Let's give that a try. Let's let's just see. Let's see what'll happen. Let's turn this into some fins. Give me some fins right there. We'll apply to the same length to the missiles. Let's also go to the sides here. See what we got. Yeah, let's put another set of fins on here. And the fra Oh no, the frags are set to 180. Negative. I did not see that. Negative on 180, folks. Alright, another set of fins. Let's get this negative. We'll do it. It's just something low. I don't really care what, just something low, you know. Alright, look at that. Now they're all just turning and burning. They no longer, so the problem with the augmented proportional guidance is at extreme angles uh, in relation to the missile's firing angle and the ship it's trying to hit. If you have that that augmented uh, proportional guidance on there, uh, the missile will have a very hard time converging, which explains why our missiles from this ship were just shooting straight up. However, now we have a lot of fins, so I feel like this is going to be a lot better. Yeah, you can see here, uh, it seems like we are definitely getting more bang for the buck. So we, we want to do a, another adjustment here. We want to make sure that the max range is set up correctly for the uh, local weapon controllers, if I can find them. Honestly, like I haven't uh, looked around this ship very much. You know what would be great is if, so let's say I was in build mode, right? And I'm sitting here looking in this ship. I wish I could go and select, like I could do this. I could say, okay, I'm going to click on local weapon controller. And then any local weapon controller in the constructible will be, like, highlighted, you know? Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be the shiz baz biz nizzle. Oh, yeah, no maximum ranges. Okay, that's why. Uh, we're going to set the max range up to be 650, I think. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't see how many fuel tanks these things had. 650 may be a little bit much. I know for the front ones it should be okay. Is it just these two? Surely there's like another local weapon controller. Oh wait, no, these are... Okay, these are for the sides. Yep, alright, so that means there's another one. Uh, probably up here. Let's get over there. We're just doing some quick mods here. Hope you guys don't mind. Oh, I think I see it way down here. Did you guys see it? Man. I'm surprised I spotted this. Yeah, no limit. All right, we're going to do 650 as well. Perfect. I think that should get us set. I think that should do it. And that way, wow, yeah, anything over 650, uh, then we won't have the Kursk wasting its missiles, which is great. Oh, and I, I will also say there are other ships that, that we uh, haven't brought in. Uh, well, that I didn't bring in because they were purely missile-based, and since we had so many missile-based ships already... Uh, I didn't want to essentially pair up more missiles with missiles. I was really thinking about resources at that point. 
So that's why I brought the Begamot in next. In fact, how are we doing? Not bad. Uh, you know, the, the Begamot does have self-healing. It does have self-repairs. I just uh, don't know how quick it is. Look at the Kursk. Look at this. It, it's just point blank. Oh, I love it. Totally bringing a Hell Raven out of the sky here. And the missiles have, uh, you know, what? Some of them have three, some of them have four fins now, I think. So their turn radius should be just freaking perfecto. It's a me, a Mario. Mwah, it's a perfecto. Oh, look. Holy shit, the Begamot is shooting. So this is why I raised up the cruising altitude on the Begamot. Normally it was set really low, I think, because it's it's more like a ship killer, you know, like a cruiser killer or something. Some, some water-based killer. And, um... You know, if you raise it up higher, then obviously you get more ships in its uh, shooting range. And it can shoot up as well, but I think it does a lot better shooting down like this. Yeah, just like this one is. Pew pew! Oh yeah, we're taking that Hell Raven out, baby. We're gonna do it. Oh, look at this. Are you okay? What are you doing down here? Oh yeah, you're pretty hurt. He's repairing though, so it's all good. All right, let's see here. Where are we? What are we doing? Look at the turn radius on these missiles. Holy crap. He's just wrecking this guy. And he's shooting his torpedoes as well. That's kind of weird. Hang on. Are you? Yeah, he is. Well, that's okay. So the Hell Raven done. Oh, we just got something else spawning in. I could feel it. Oh, Thunderdong. Thunder dong -da 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 Please don't hit him. Please don't ram him. Actually, you know what? Ram him. Yeah, do Oh. So much more of us got wrecked than the enemy on that ramming situation. Interface off. Man, so much of us got wrecked on that. Alright, where's the Kursk? The Kursk is directly below him. Oh, and the Thunder Dong is dropping rockets on us. Look. Let's get down here. I don't know what's happening right now. It's so bright. Oh, yeah. He is nailing us. No, Kursk. Live, my friend. No. Hurry, everybody. Take out the Thunderdong. It is doing way too much damage. Let's take a look at our Kursk real quick. Let's, let's see how we're doing here. Boy, I got some repairs to do. Our fleets are starting to get kind of shambly-bambly. Oh, 99%. That's not bad. What am I talking about? I was like, sweet Jesus, no! Look how many force points they get. 2.2. We brought so much to the table here. It is ridiculous. So I could have sworn... Didn't they have, like, 12 ships over here or something? I guess they did. Wow, have we really been defeating them? I mean, I don't, I don't know why that's coming as such a big surprise to me, but... This is fantastic! And this Kursk is just rocking face. And you know what? Look, we're actually sort of gaining resources in a battle. I am highly impressed. Let's go interface off again. How? Why not? Feels so good. So, we got the uh, Beluga Elites here just, just lasering down on the Thunderdong. And the Kursk as well. In fact, the Kursk is shooting his missiles up into the Thunderdong's Gooch node. Ooh, the Gooch node. Oh my. Yeah, look at this. We just did a complete fly through. In the face hole, out the bung hole. <laughs> or something like that. So this is great. So this feels pretty good. I, I, I'm seriously, I'm really baffled. I thought they had so many more ships. Uh, you know, I thought we were dealing with like 190 force points here. Have we already taken out so much stuff? Maybe it's just one of those days, you know, where everything goes really quick. Anyways, I think we only have one more ship here. It's this guy. Dude, look at all of our ships we brought. I feel kind of bad that we brought so many. All right, let's see what we're dealing with, ladies and gents. Here it is. Oh, is this a... Uh, is this a dragon? It is a dragon. Ooh, I do like this ship. I like this one a lot. I don't know if we've seen this one on camera yet. And as soon as the, uh, you know, nighttime goes away... We'll be able to see what's going on. Right now, it looks like we're just in weird screensaver mode. 
Like, you just got lines and shit just, like, drawn all over the screen. Like a snoog of line coming at you. Here we go. Sun coming up. Oh, yeah. Got the majestic view of the dragon coming in here. I really like the front of the dragon is very cool. It looks like something, uh, you know, dwarves would work on. Some sort of gold craft craftsmanship rocking out. Yeah, that's right. Dwarves. Dwarves in Netter. Who would have ever thunked? So, one, I really hate this dragon. I don't like it at all. Uh, in combat. I mean, I love the ship design. I know I just said that. But in combat, negative. So, we're going to see what the Kursk does here. We are currently sitting 700 meters from the Kursk. So, by this point, he should have stopped shooting. So, we're going to see... Yeah, you can see his missiles falling short. So, in fact, it looks like I probably need to adjust him to be more like, uh, you know, 600 meters max for the Kursk's uh, firing range. Let's see. Are you done shooting? You should be. Why are you still shooting? Did, I must have missed a weapon controller. Oh, here we go. Maybe. I can't tell if it's just the slowness that he's still shooting. Or what? The front ones have definitely stopped. No, I think... No, he's still definitely shooting. What the heck is going on here? I definitely missed... Oh, there's so much crap. I definitely missed a local weapon controller somewhere, but I thought... thought these were... I thought these were them right here. Yeah, 658. Like, he shouldn't be shooting at all. Maximum range to engage. 605. So weird. It's almost like he doesn't want to listen to it or something. And we'll also do this guy. There we go. 602. Hmm. What the hell? Well, I don't know. There, there's got to be another, like, local weapon controller somewhere, you know? Just squeeching out there. So how are the Begamots doing? How are we looking? Because... Very curious. Not bad. Not bad. Really, just one of them got totally foobarred. And look, here is the remains of the dragon. Did we do it? Did we just clear out that huge force? No, not yet. Oh, there it is! Wow, we... Seriously? Did we just do it? No, I've learned my lesson. I'm not moving these all, at, all, all as one. There's so many of them, though. Look at all of them. Because when I logged back in, it was so difficult to, like, unassociate all my ships and stuff uh, from, from their squares. I just, I just couldn't find, like, all the unique little blips. Even scrolling in, it was really weird. Let's get them all over here. Let's move everybody up. Go, forces of Scroat! Move forth into that great night. We'll put you here. Oh, yeah, we'll put you here. Uh, let's 10 exit. Is everybody moving? All right, everybody's moving. Cool. So that was the Begamot. Pretty good. So we almost have, you know, we're at... Uh, 760 thou metal, so we're doing good. It's enough to bring in another ship. <coughs> wow, excuse me. Uh, I'm just not sure. I may actually save up and bring in the Blood Destitution. It's a big ship, though. It's 22,000 blocks. So if we bring that in, it's going to be a ship that... It, it's going to have to be able to stand on its own. So I'm going to play around with the vehicle designer some and see. Uh, otherwise, you know, I'll just keep looking for ships until we get... Oh, no, no, no. Uh, enough resources. Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just a resources game at this point is really what we're playing. So, uh, you know, we made good progress. We pushed up. We took out a huge, huge amount of force points from the uh, Grey Talons here. I don't know if you guys realize, but that was a lot of force points. Uh, we definitely had close to 200 force points there, so pretty fantastic. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but there's a lawnmower mowing in the background right now. So I'm going to take this opportunity to bring the episode to a close. Thank you so much, everybody, for stopping by and hanging out. And, uh... Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it the old thumbs up. I, I definitely apologize for the delay in episodes. Uh, you know, I've got that internet. You know, it's like where when it rains and rains hard, you're just crossing your fingers like, please God, don't shut off. And of course it shuts off. Power goes out like a million times. 
So anyways, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to have another episode out again the very next day. I'm going to try to back-to-back -back these for a little bit. So until then, hope you all have a great one. Take it easy and stay classy.